what it is. It's your boy, Dutch the Damon, and you're now watching Damon Time with Dutch. On today's episode a Street Stories Uncut, we over West Baltimore in them trenches with it, man. Now, this situation happened back in 1992. We're going to be covering the story coming out of West Baltimore. But before I hop off in the storytelling mode, I want to send a big shout out to the brother Young Swift. This brother, a loyal supporter, man. Can't appreciate you enough, brother. Brother sent his hard-earned money in support the channel through Cash App. Appreciate you, brother. Young Swift. This stay locked in. I got us. Now that we got that out the way, let's get it. All right, so we're going to be covering the case this morning, coming out of West Baltimore, back in 1992. We're going to talk a little bit about Tanya Lucas. Now, prior to this morning, I had never even heard of this case. I never even knew nothing that horrendous happened in Baltimore City prior to the Dawson family case. But sure as shit, this happened before the Dawson family case back in 92. Now, this story a little while, so strap on your seatbelt. Get your popcorn ready. Tanya Lucas. Now, Tanya was a drug addict from over West Baltimore back in the early 90s. Had seven kids. Her drug of choice was crack cocaine. She would run around soliciting her body, selling her body, in order to feed that monkey on her back. Now, it was rumors in the hood that she wasn't feeding her kids, wasn't properly taking care of her kids. Plus, there was abuse allegations. They saying she was abusing them as well. Not a father in sight. For all that running around, drug and caught up with her. CPS was breathing down her neck, trying to take the kids, Plus, she smoked up the rent money, so she was pending her eviction. She was ready to get put out. Her and all her kids ready to get put out. So I'm reading the transcript, right? It reads like this. Some type of way she come in contact with a John, the dude that was going to go ahead on and pay her for a little BJ. You know what I mean? Blow dust. Ten dollars. So Slim said he gave her ten dollars for the, for the BJ. She went on here, blessed him, went on here and bought some crack with the money. Now, he said while they was in the house together, she told him she was pending her eviction. And that she was going to burn her house down because the Red Cross provide housing for people who homes burned down. This was her plan. And she followed through with that plan. However, she burned the house down with the babies inside the house. To leave her whole family, all six kids, gone. She had one surviving kid. She had seven kids. Went straight to jail. Got six life sentences. And she kept getting putting in the pills, putting in the pills. She went through four trials. Spent 23 years in prison. And this Merlin court system actually allowed this woman to come home. She home right now at 59 years old. She home. Had to burn her own babies up in that fire like that. Six of them. And they talking about they didn't want to put her through another trial because she got metastatic breast cancer. Or however you say the word breast cancer. I don't give a fuck what she got. They should have locked her in the cell and ain't given no medicine, no treatment, or nothing. No water, no food. Oh, fuck. But they can tell y'all better than I can. I'm going to let y'all watch this clip, man, from back in 1992. God bless the dead. Rest in peace to all the babies that died in that fire, you man. These monstrous charges of killing my own kids. Two weeks to the day, Tanya Lucas struggles with the reality of a jury convicting her of something she says she didn't do. She says it's put her mind into a tailspin. When this first happened, yes, I mean, suicidal was on my thumb. But after coming to grips with reality while behind bars, she says she's regained her composure. I don't care if 12 people said that I was guilty of this. I know that, and I have always known since the day they brought these charges against me that I have been innocent of this. Lucas says she thinks she knows who started the fatal fire, and to them, she sends this message. Now, I'm just feeling like God is going to see that he get what he deserved. Prosecutors claim Lucas set the deadly fire in order to avoid eviction and to hide the abuse of her two-year-old son who perished in the blaze. There's no way in the world that a mother is going to abuse one child out of her seven. I love each and every last one of my kids. Tanya, how much does it bother you that you may possibly spend the rest of your life in jail? It doesn't bother me because as long as I continue to stay incarcerated, I will constantly fight for my freedom each and every day because I know that I am innocent of these charges. This is Tanya Lucas, the day her six children were buried last year. Today, many painful thoughts revolve around her surviving child, 12-year-old Billy. He lost five brothers and one sisters that he grew up with from the time that they was born or he was born. And then a few days later, he lost his mother. But Tanya Lucas tells me that all hope isn't lost. Following a 